Is anyone else feeling a strong sense of deja vu or is that just me? Hello and welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Kit and today Brett Cooper is channeling her inner classically Abby. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Brett and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below along with sources and resources. And now onto the reason we're all here. Last summer, I posted the videos Girl Defined Wants You to Have Babies for Jesus and Classically Abby Wants You to Have Babies for Society. And what is it about summer? Brett Cooper has now joined the You Need to Have Kids chorus. And I just want to say that when I first saw this video, it was titled Humanity is Not Screwed Yet. But I guess that sounded too environmentally conscious or something. So now it's Save the World, Have Children. Anyway, Daily Wire employee and Ben Shapiro protege Brett Cooper has, so far as I'm aware, never met Ben's sister Abigail Roth, known on YouTube as Classically Abby, but she's channeling her inner Abby in this video. I suppose it was only a matter of time. Conservatives have a funny habit of being unable to mind their own business and their favorite hobby seems to be telling other people how they should live. Even when it comes to incredibly personal things like having kids. Now, I don't remember exactly what Girl Defined said, something about the most important thing being creating disciples, but I distinctly remember Abby saying she didn't like the idea that motherhood is a choice. Let's see what Brett's got. So I think you guys know this, but no matter where you look, the messaging is out there, don't have kids. You know, kids are called crotch goblin these days, little demons, women accuse them of ruining their girl boss corporate dreams. They're only gonna contribute more to climate change and the planet is gonna burn if we all keep having children. And then on top of that, the world is apparently just so bad that there is no reason to have children. And some people say that it is even harmful for the children to be born into our world, which is just, the most clouded, pessimistic take that I have ever heard. Like, do we have our problems? Yes. But do we also live in the most advanced, richest, healthiest time in human history? Also, yes. It is not dangerous to have children in 2024, and we are going to dispel this myth today. I would like to note that the U.S. has the highest maternal mortality rate among high-income nations. So, yes, it is dangerous to have kids in 2024. And Brett, like Abby, mistakes her privilege for something universally shared. And Brett, like Abby, chooses to lecture instead of understanding why people don't want to have kids or feel like they shouldn't. And you know, if someone doesn't want to have kids, that's one thing. But if someone does, but feels like they shouldn't because of the current state of the world, that is actually something that's not out of our control, broadly speaking. Actually treating the issues the world is currently facing seriously instead of this irresponsible, it's not happening or it will magically go away or resolve itself if we ignore it, might go a long way in allaying people's concerns. But nah, We'll just tell you how you should have kids anyway and not worry about the world you'll be bringing them into. And it is not lost on me that at least Bethany, Kristen, and Abby were married mothers while telling people to have kids and Brett is married. She's telling people to do something she hasn't done, though I'm sure she will soon. Still, it does strike me as, well, why is someone in their early 20s lecturing people about having kids? It's just bizarre and disrespectful. I mean, seriously, guys, just do one Google search and these are the type of headlines that you will see. I mean, there are pages and pages of think pieces spending over the past eight years saying, do not have children, warning people against it. The titles Brett saw fit to share are, given the state of the world, is it irresponsible to have kids? It feels irresponsible to have a second child and yet I want one. How do I grapple with this? How I justify having kids despite the climate crisis. That is not pages and pages. Those are three articles and I can tell how Brett hasn't read those articles because though the first is paywalled, the other two aren't telling people not to have kids. They're talking about why they did have kids despite their fears for the future. And all of these articles and this whole ideology has certainly left an impact on my generation who has grown up and become adults amidst all of this. One of these articles read, I'm never having kids. All my Gen Z friends agree we won't be parents in a world like this. And this young woman who is 25 and she's a massage therapist said, we have seen the crash of the economy, how there are fewer jobs and applicants, salaries that aren't rising to meet inflation levels, climate change is disastrous, and the prices of daily goods just keep getting higher and higher. What about the situation is supposed to make young people want to have kids? Those are all valid concerns. And then on top of that, they are also just busy doing other things, apparently. She wrote that a lot of her friends are instead focused on trying to make the world a better place. We spend our time calling our representatives to demand legislative change, going to climate justice protests, or trying to elevate the social causes we believe in. I often think about the world that was passed down to me and what kind of world I will in turn pass on to future generations. And I mean, it's all kind of laughable. I did notice that Brett was trying not to laugh, but 
Thanks for admitting it. Now, what's so funny about trying to affect change in the world you live in? But say what you will about Gen Z, but they are engaged. They might be engaged in causes that I disagree with and think are futile, and I don't think going to climate justice protests are worth their time, but they are much more passionate and in the know than other generations. However, on the flip side, that also might be their downfall because they are so focused on all of these protests and the doom and the gloom and the pessimism that they can't see anything else in the world that could possibly be meaningful, hopeful, or bring them joy or better the world, like becoming parents and raising the next generation to be good, innovative, productive people. So it's funny they're trying to make the world a better place because Brett doesn't agree with their causes and they should be focused on having kids that can make the world a better place. One girl on X just a couple of weeks ago said, I don't understand people who are having children right now. The planet is cooked. There's a virus disabling and killing everyone. We're fast tracking fascism. And I don't think anyone is going to stop any of it. Why would you put another human into this world? I mean, like, just say that you've given up. Just say, yeah, everything is about me and I've seen no future and I've just given up because that is basically what you're saying if you're choosing not to have children because of the state of the world. Is Brett really trying to shame people for not being too enthusiastic about the future of the world right now? And what is this nonsense about giving up? Not having kids because you don't think they would have a good future isn't giving up. Giving up is just shrugging and saying, well, nothing we can do. And Brett just laughed at someone who wrote about how she and her friends were trying to make the world a better place. So Brett doesn't actually care about people giving up. She just cares if they have kids or not. Now this tweet immediately blew up. Obviously, as you guys can see, it has almost 20 million impressions. And for the most part, people were telling this poster to get a grip, which I very much appreciated. Somebody quote tweeted her and said, I'm okay with a neuron depleted collective not reproducing. If they can melt down this way about the world news, they can't handle raising a child properly anyways. Damn. I mean, that's kind of a common theme online. Like all the people who don't want to have children, maybe it just shouldn't. Maybe it'll be better for us. Thanks, Brett, for finally realizing that if someone doesn't want kids, they shouldn't have kids. But also, I don't want that to be the world that we live in. I don't want there to be half the population that is so angry and upset and believes that there is no hope in the world. Like that is not the basis of a good society. Believing everything is fine when it isn't, isn't the basis of a good society either. And there's nothing wrong with being angry or upset at the state of the world. And someone believing there's no hope in the world, well, that's their business. Conservatives mind their own business challenge, impossible. Brett shares one of her favorite funny tweets, which is not that funny in my opinion. And it's really weird to me how she laughs laughs off people's valid concerns for the future like they're nothing. I also loved this quote tweet. This girl said, I think people who say this stuff have usually never truly had to go through any real suffering. Otherwise, you would know that when life seems difficult and hope is hard to find, the love that surrounds you is the most precious thing in the world. More love and joy is always good. Again, having children is a hopeful action. It is literally the most productive and hopeful thing that our species can do. I would like to know what Brett means by saying that having kids is the most productive thing you can do, but anyway, I know Brett is young and I guess she hasn't yet realized that this notion of having kids to better the world actually isn't a new one. We can't figure things out, but maybe the next generation can, was at least around when I was a kid and well, if we keep putting things on the next generation to figure out instead of making a go ourselves, we'll never get anywhere and it's easier to pass the buck instead of making an effort. Which is something I would have thought conservatives would be against, personal responsibility and all that. Like why wouldn't you want to do this? It genuinely makes no sense to me. Now, the majority of people in the comment section and in all the quote tweets were poking fun at her rationale, which I think is the most important thing here. The most important thing was that people were making fun of her? How was that the most important thing? One guy quote tweeted this and said, absolutely agree. Really only makes sense to have children during those periods of human history in which there are no diseases, no environmental issues or political crises. Like if people actually did that, none of us would be here today. Society would not exist. Civilizations would have fallen already. Literally, I would not be alive if my parents lived by that rationale. So you better pause this video and call your parents and thank them for allowing you to be born. Except in previous eras, reliable birth control was hard to come by. So people didn't have a choice when it came to having kids. And way back, having kids was productive because kids were put to work. We tend to frown on child labor these days. Brett segues in her ad here, and I just want to say that I had Pure Talk for like two years, and then one day I stumbled upon their endorsements page and found Sean Hannity, Ben Shapiro, and Dennis Prager on there, and I was horrified. So just a reminder to research what companies you're supporting. Anyway, back to Brett. It is an affordable way to thank your parents for not believing any of this BS. Believing what BS? 
Does Brett think climate change, the cost of living crisis, the rise of fascism isn't real? My friend Allie, who I adore, you all need to go follow her on X, but she also quote tweeted this girl and said, the main character syndrome it takes to believe that this is a uniquely catastrophic time in human history is insane. Anyone having children in the early 1900s had polio, world wars, and objectively way more fascism to worry about. Aren't you glad they had kids? It would probably blow their minds to know that not everyone is grateful to have been born. But setting aside everything I just said about reliable birth control and kids working, it's good people are considering the future when it comes to having kids. You can disagree with their decision, though that is weird because unless they're your partner, their decision has nothing to do with you and will affect you in no way. But ultimately, it is up to every individual whether or not they have kids. And that people can and do choose not to just drives conservatives up a wall. Well, in all honesty, they probably aren't because this is the same group of people that literally wishes they were not born for the sake of the planet. So don't really know about that. But like truly, how can you genuinely believe that this is the worst time in human history? That it is so bad that we all just need to throw in the towel, give up and stop procreating. No one Brett has chosen to show has said that people shouldn't have kids. And based on your worldview, when would have been a good time? Like the Great Depression, the Industrial Revolution, colonial America, maybe the Renaissance or Rome? Like every period in history has its problems. Every country and race struggles at different times in history. Empires rise and fall. That is like the cycle of life. Viruses and disease spread and kill millions and millions of people. These are awful things but they are also part of life and very, very normal. People all throughout history have been doing this. And at the same time, they've been raising families and having hope. Does Brett really think people had kids back in the day because they had hope? Anyway, I was going to say we know a lot more than we used to about what the future holds. And then I realized that's why conservatives don't like, as Candace Owens said, the cult of science. They don't want us to know about climate change, which is why so much money has been spent trying to cover it up. And since they don't care about world happenings or figure they have enough money to get through unscathed, they don't think we should care or take the world into account either. I and mean, all of those things still happen today. We have been experiencing them, but objectively, we are still living in the best time of history so far. Brett often forgets that not everyone shares her privilege. And though she's been reading at least the headlines and some paragraphs of her articles and a lot of sweets, she's apparently not comprehending. It's not today people are worried about. It's the uncertainty of the future. And sure, no one could know what the future held 100, 200, 1000 years ago. But well, as Brett noted, we're fortunate to live in the current time when we do have the ability to see what the future holds, or at least some of it. And right now it's not pretty. I mean, like even lefty journos agree with this. This is from Vox. The world is getting better all the time. And then they showed 11 maps and charts about this. I specifically loved this piece. This was from last year. Is this the best time to be alive? And the author wrote, for most of human history, life was very difficult for most people. They lacked basic medicines and died relatively young. They had no painkillers and people with ailments spent much of their lives in agonizing pain. Entire families lived in bug infested dwellings that offered neither comfort nor privacy. They worked in the fields from sunrise to sunset, yet hunger and famines were common. Transportation was primitive and most people never traveled beyond their native villages or nearest towns. Ignorance and illiteracy were rife. The good old days were by and large very bad for the majority of humankind. Since then, humanity has made enormous progress, especially over the course of the last two centuries. And you might be asking, well, what progress? Because the world seems awful right now. Well, the author responded. And he wrote, in the mid 18th century, 40% of children died before their 15th birthday in Sweden and 50% in Bavaria. That was not unusual. The average child mortality among hunter gatherers was 49%. Today, global child mortality is 4%. It is 0.3% in Nordic nations and Japan. Most of the people who survived into adulthood lived on the equivalent of $2 per day, a permanent state of penury that lasted from the start of the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago until the 1800s. Today, the global average is $35 adjusted for inflation. Put differently, the average inhabitant of the world is 18 times better off. With rising incomes comes a massive reduction in absolute poverty, which fell from 90% in the early 19th century to 40% in 1980 to less than 10% today. As scholars from the Brookings Institution put it, poverty reduction of this magnitude is unparalleled in history. And yet all that doesn't stop some folks from trying to send us back into the past. But in all seriousness, yes, I'm glad I'm alive today and not in the 1500s. But just because that's how things are today doesn't mean that's how they will be in the future, especially as climate change wreaks havoc 
havoc on our planet, which doesn't just mean stay inside with the AC more. Yes, temperatures will rise and that will also cause more natural disasters in our systems, including our food systems, to go awry. And it doesn't have to be the worst case Mad Max style future, but that's what we're heading towards if people don't pull their heads out of the sand so we can start planning now to maybe not make things even worse and start planning for what we have instead of what we had. And on top of our mortality and material and technological advancements, especially in medicine, the social progress is also unparalleled. I mean, slavery is banned in every single country on earth. And no matter what the BLM activists tell you, progress and freedom for minorities, especially in this country, is incredible. Excuse me, did a white woman just assure us that minorities in the US have incredible progress and freedom and tell us to disregard black activists? What is her source for that claim? Where did she find the arrogance to make that assertion? And is she aware of what's going on in the states right now where politicians are attempting to roll back civil rights? Just because something was won in the past doesn't mean it's guaranteed in the future. And even though there are awful foreign conflicts at play, right now in comparison to the rest of history, it is an incredibly, incredibly peaceful time. I mean, there is so much to be grateful for and hopeful about, but most people are just choosing not to see it. And our media does not help with that at all. Brett is part of the problem. She takes things she sees online and besides blowing them out of proportion, she also misrepresents them. See the video published just last week. For that matter, I could probably dedicate my channel to Brett Cooper and conservative dishonesty and never run out of material. And as a result, there's so many people out there, especially my age, who believe that the world is literally doomed, the planet is doomed, and that there is no way that they will ever succeed in this world that is just so terrible and literally out to get them. But really, it's not that bad. It is actually pretty great. Way to downplay their valid concerns. And though it's great that Brett is happy, I wish she would realize that not everyone is as fortunate as she is and that that isn't a personal moral failing on their part. Now, interestingly, right after that original tweet blew up, like a day later, model Naomi Campbell spoke on this very thing. So I wonder if she is, you know, as chronically online as I am and was responding to this, but she had a fantastic take that I wish more people would listen to. Buzzfeed reported on this on June 10th, but she actually spoke about this in an interview with the Times that day. The headline read, Naomi Campbell said that young women who don't want kids due to the economic climate will change their minds. And in the interview, she talked about how she had kids very, very late in life. I think that that is something that she regrets, but that it is the best thing that has ever happened to her. She said that her kids are 110% her priority and that she wants to make the world a better place for them. And then she spoke directly to my generation and she said, quote, I have heard a lot of young girls saying that it is too expensive to have children and that they may not want them. And I have said, you will change your mind you will want to be a mom. Quote, I understand economically it is tough, but my mom had nothing and she made it work. It is worth it. It is so amazing. Naomi Campbell had her kids in her 50s. Yes, it's entirely possible to say at 20 that you don't want kids and then change your mind at some point, but that's up to the person. It isn't a given and it shouldn't be expected. And as someone who has been told, you'll change your mind, or I thought that at your age too, it's annoying and unhelpful. And when people, especially successful people, talk about how their parents struggled and it was so worth it, my initial reaction is always, so? That's their family's business, and if someone doesn't want to struggle, they shouldn't be guilted for it. And it's not just her mom and my mom and dad and your parents. It is generations upon generations of families that came before us in objectively worse times, and they made it work. They were surrounded by love and wanted to make the world a better place, even in the darkest times. They were objectively so much darker than what we are dealing with today. And that mindset is something that we have very obviously lost. And considering the threat of depopulation, this could also be our demise. There really isn't a downside for population decline. Yes, we'll have to rethink how we do things, but banking on constant growth isn't feasible on multiple levels. And we could could plan for it, but apparently we're just choosing to try and guilt and shame people into having kids and outline abortion and birth control to make people have kids by force if they won't listen. Definitely a society worth perpetuating. But even beyond the idea of depopulation worrying about that crisis, I also think that this could be our emotional demise. Because if you don't have hope, or any sort of positive view about our world or our future, then what kind of life are you actually living? That is what you should be thinking about. You can have hope without having kids. And as one of Brett's articles noted, you can work for the change you want to see in the world instead of having a kid with the hope the kid will do it. That was it for Brett's video. I suppose the message was that your ancestors suffered, so you should too. She did try to throw in, have kids to have hope, but I'm not buying it. And it was always my impression that previous generations wanted their kids to have more than they did. So I don't know why Brett thought the notion that to suffer is to be human would convince people that, yes, they should have kids. And the title of this video is a lie. 
Brett doesn't think the world needs saving. She laughed when someone described how they were trying to make the world a better place for future generations. But anyway, what do you think? Do you have hope for the future now? And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.